What's up, TKC? What's up? Yo, last week, the week before, the week before was so D O P E dope. Thank you, Spelling Bee. You know, I tried. I felt smart for a second. <laughs> but it's countdown time. It's countdown. Let's go, y'all. You gotta like, let's get it. share, like, share, and let's get it. Listen, TKC what? Strong. TKC what? Strong. Oh. Throw your strong emoji right there, right there, right there in the comment. Right there, right there. Let everybody know Let that everybody you're watching know service. That. We want 150 shares. Let's get like, it. Like, comment, share. Boom. Bala tu tu. God is working for our good even when it's not good. And God can still prosper us in a pandemic. Well, I mean, we're, we're, we're more intentional on, on how we look in terms of our social media. Uh, we spend a lot of more time uh, um, working on details and, and we're, we're working on ensuring uh, that, that we are connecting uh, with the people as best we can, doing more follow-up, more checking up on how people are doing in their lives. Three minutes left. Stashi? Yes. We have our YouTube family watching right now as well. What should we tell our YouTube family? Let me tell y'all something. We be forgetting about our YouTube family. Listen, guys, we need you to go on YouTube and subscribe to the Kingdom Church Orlando YouTube channel. TKC underscore Orlando. It's only amazing. We have everything on there. If you want to know more about us, more about our pastor with the history of the Kingdom Church. Amazing sermon. Yes, all of the amazing sermons of the past leading up to today. And back to our Facebook family. Correct. Today, right now, while you're watching, like, share, like, share. And y'all remember, we have Talk About It Tuesday. Now, there's some awesome conversations that be going down. Single, relationships, cooking, all the above, a hot topic that happens to talk about it Tuesday on Instagram and Facebook. We also have Momentum Monday, Woo! Wellness Wednesday, Woo! Thriving Thursday, Woo! Faith Talk Thursday, Eat Your Fries. Y'all sleep. Y'all need to wake up. Even with these three minutes left, y'all need to get connected. Get connected Get with right the program. Now. Get connected right yes. now. Yes. Like, share, go follow, subscribe, do it now. Start a watch party. We love you. Let's go. When you're dealing with stay-at-home order, uh, you're dealing with uh, a lot of things closed. Um, we have to be creative at, at how we're able to, to communicate, how we're able to connect. Uh, and, and so uh, the challenge is, is ensuring that we're able to make sure we're on the same page, we're on one accord, same sheet of music. We have to ensure uh, that we, we, we dot all our I's and cross out our T's. Uh, in order that we present a good uh, look for our people. One minute left. One minute left. Did you like and share? <laughs> like and share, like and share, comment below. Mr. Ramsey, you have on a winter hat. I know. <laughs> but Stasha, we got one minute left. We got one minute left. Y'all better go like and share. One minute left. It's about to be fire. This word and this worship. Yes. W W. Come not on. Eminem. Uh, w W. I like word that. and worship. Word and worship. It be real. That's why you need to like and share right now. Start your watch Let's parties, go. guys. Let's, party. Tell your Let's, Let's get go. it. Let's go. Let's go.
Even in your home, just open your mouth. Father, we honor you tonight. We give you praise. We give you worship. I got a reason to praise Thank you. We honor your name, Jesus. I got a reason to praise him. I've got a reason to praise him. I got a reason to give you glory, God. I got a reason to praise you. You've been so good to me, yeah. I got a reason to praise you. Oh, mighty one, I got a reason to praise you. Oh, God. Oh, God. I love you forever. I love you forever. Because you've been you've been so kind to me. I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever. Your praise will forever be on my lips. Your praise will forever be on my lips. All my days I'll give you glory. All my days I'll give you one. When I look back over my life, I got a reason to praise you. Oh, when I look back over my life, my hands go up. My mouth is filled with praise. I got a reason to praise you. I got a reason to praise you. The rocks won't cry out in my place. The rocks can't cry out in my place. All I need is a memory of what you've done. Of what you've done, how you picked me up, and how you turned me around, how you put my Things may not be perfect, but I got a reason to praise you. I got a reason to praise you. Yeah. Oh. Love you, Jesus. In my life, be glory. I'm 
back to you, Jesus. May everything we do point people back to the cross, to your sacrifice. May our lives bring you glory, God. It's our heart's desire, God.
something sweet to love in this moment you're so worthy God there is no one like you above you or that can compare to you we stand in awe of your presence your glory no matter what we feel no matter what we're in you're still holy and we declare it to be so so we thank you for this moment in your presence Father I thank you for each and every person that is watching online May you penetrate to the heart, through the hardest hearts in this moment. May you make hardened hearts soft as flesh, God. We decrease and we beg you to increase in everything concerning us, God. And Father, we promise to give your name all glory, all honor, and all praise. For there is no one like you in heaven or on earth. Be pleased with our worship. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen.
Another opportunity that we have to come into your home to share God's word with you and we all get to participate in the ministry of generosity. I was just talking to my wife about a story when she first got her job at, what is it? The Foundation Academy. Foundation Academy. And she said, I'm, I'm going to give my first check to the Lord. I, I'm a pastor. And I, and I was like, uh, are you sure you want to do that and give, and give the whole, you know, maybe God will take a quarter of it, but she gave the whole thing. And, and I want you to kind of share about what your favorite, we're not asking you to give your whole check, so don't, don't screenshot this and then run this, but I just want to share about the heart of giving and why that's such an important piece. Well, I've always had a heart to give, and that wasn't my first time giving my whole check. Um, every time I have, God gave me an opportunity, because I know without God's favor, I wouldn't have had the job. I would give him my first fruit, which is my first paycheck. And with this last um, job opportunity, where I got to work at the school that I wanted to be at, I decided that I'm gonna do the same thing. And what God did for me was just bless me even more. My birthday came up, a month later and it, I had just about the same amount, a little bit more than I would have had on my first paycheck. So I believe you can never beat God given. Um, he's always watching over you and if you have a heart to give, He sees that heart and He will bless that heart of, of, that you give. And, and I want to encourage you like we do every week to grab your phones out and many of us are blessed to still be working, still employed and I, and I want to ask you to honor God with what you have, not to shy away or string away from what that God has told you to do. Giving is God's principle. It's the way that God introduces new things. My daughter came to me and said, I, I want $5. And $5 wasn't a big deal to me. So I said, okay, go away. And she came back again, daddy, I want $5. And the way she asked gave me so much joy to give it to her. And I gave it to her and she started walking around. My daddy gave me $5. You're, if, if us being earthly fathers are so willing to give to our children, how much more is your heavenly father willing to give to you? So let's, let's do it right now. I'm going to do mine right at this moment so that we can all be a part of the giving process because it's important. Whatever we sow in this house makes a major difference. And I wanna encourage you to do that. Thank you for cash apping. Thank you all for doing your part in the process of what we call TKC. And because you're giving, we're TKC strong. Thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you for just thinking it not robbery to sow into this house. We bless you. We pray God's peace upon you and God multiply everything that you sow. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. This panel discussion is gonna be fire. So tune in, give us a quick second. Let's get all together so we can put it together. It's gonna be a blessing to you. We'll see you soon. We are so excited to come into your space, your living room, your dining room, your bedroom, whether you're watching us in church clothes or in pajamas, we're just happy to be with you today. I want you to share it. I want you to let your friends know this is going to be something special. It was so appropriate for the worship team to leave us off with 
I want to make you smile. I, that is such a powerful song and many of us can relate because we just want to make our mamas proud. And so we're calling this session Dear Mama. If y'all know the evangelist Tupac Shakur who recorded that poetic song about wanting to uh, make his mama proud. And many of us today living in this context have a desire to make our mamas proud. And today I have the privilege of having an array of influence that is sharing from motherhood and all different experiences that are gonna be a blessing to you. Maybe you might be one that has children that are grown. We have someone that can relate to you. Maybe you're a single mother raising your children. We have someone that can relate to you. Maybe you just had a brand new child and sleepless nights. Maybe you have an established childhood family and now you're just trying to raise them as best as you can. Or maybe your kids are grown and you got a blended situation. We have it all covered for you. It's going to be amazing. And I want to start this off by having them introduce themselves real quick so you know their names. You may see them around the church. But these are your family, so you can have an opportunity. I'm going to start right chair. Hello, I'm Lady Karen. And you know, I have four children, or we have four children, school age children, where, you know, there can be challenges just having school age children. And we have <laughs> another Karen. Yes, I'm Karen as well. And um, I have four children. Uh, two school age and two adult children. Ooh. Hello, my name is Shantae and I have two children. I have a seven year old and a 11 year old. Hello, I am Lady April and I have six children. Amen. Four boys and two girls, they're all adult age. And we Amen. have Kissimmee Last Zone. but not least, I'm Dr. Young from Kissimmee and I have three bonus sons. I have three stepsons, and I just recently had a baby girl last oh, February. Ooh, mm -hmm. <laughs> so here's a great question I think it would be good to start off with, and all of you can kind of jump in and talk about what, is, what does motherhood mean to you? A lot of young girls grow up wanting to be married, playing with the Barbie dolls, I'm not, I've never been a young girl, so I can't relate. So <laughs> like, I'm not sure if they're thinking about, I wanna be a mother, but what does motherhood mean to you now that you actually are a mother versus when you just thought about being a mother? Okay, well, when I've always wanted to be a mother, I knew that for a fact. And it's different. There's so many different stages of motherhood I believe in the beginning, I, you know, you love your, you love the process of the nursing and having your child mm -hmm. and rearing your child, and then it gets a little more complicated. So motherhood right now has its roller coasters. It goes up and down, up and down, mm -hmm. and you're constantly learning and growing as your children are learning and growing. Mm -hmm. So there are times where. You know, I feel confident as a mother, and there's sometimes I have some insecurities as a mother. And this just, you know, the stages that I go through in life. I guess I'll go. For me, um, just becoming a mother myself, not just with the step boys that I have, but actually becoming a biological mom, you know, that was a process for me. I had went through IVF, so I never knew if that was gonna even happen for me or not. So for me, it's just very special that I'm able to be a mom and somebody actually called me mom and to take care of her even though even last night I had a sleepless night <laughs> five <laughs> hours last night because she didn't want to go to sleep but it's still the best feeling in the world right it really is for me um it's the greatest blessing that I could have ever experienced and I have three boys one girl and it has been it has been wonderful at times and they're all spread out. So my youngest is 12, my daughter's 17, and I have a 23 year old and a 30 year old. Wow. So it's different, each one, right. but awesome. all, all a blessing. Um, for me, I can honestly say that I feel like motherhood has brought out a strength in me that 
I don't think you really know you possess what type of strength you have mm -hmm. until you have children. Right. You know, you mm -hmm. really have to believe in yourself and, you know, believe in yourself that you're leading your kids in the right way. And I have two children, my daughter's seven and my son's 11. And the way I deal with my seven-year-old, I can't approach my 11-year-old. So you really have to have a lot of patience, compassion, love individually mm -hmm. for each of them. So it's all of the above for me and motherhood. <laughs> so there, there, there may be, um, Miss April, what, what about yourself? What I think you there's a lot of adjectives I can put. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I talk about motherhood, but it is a privilege to be able to um, have the experience of raising another human being that God mm -hmm. has created. That's right. Mm -hmm. And along with that, it is challenging, it is scary, it's wonderful, it's great, and all those nice and not so nice adjectives um, that are put there. And I think Lady Karen mentioned that it is a roller coaster yes. um, being a mom. There are many struggles and challenges that we're faced with, um, but as each one come, God sees us through. So motherhood is great. It's a great opportunity to just be able to nurture something that God has created, another creation of His. Yes. And, and this is Mother's Day. A lot of people are watching <laughs> and, and sharing with their friends. And what are some, if you were talking to a, you know, a young lady that's, that's, that's watching, what would you say are some internal challenges of being a mother that I'm sure they can relate to, but they just want someone to verbalize what they've always been feeling. And how do you work? How do you work through it? How do you how do you process through it? Any? Well, what I've learned through the years, I can't do it all. You know, we try to be super mom. You know, have everything in order. And there's some days it's not always going to be that way. Um, just having somebody with you, alongside of you, if you're a single mom or if you're married. You need that other mother there because it really does take a village. Um, they may have gone through the same experiences that you're going through, and it's okay to reach out for help. You know, sometimes we just go through pain by ourselves, and we think that we'll be in, inadequate if we feel like we mention this about what our child is doing or what we're struggling with. But no, God created people for us to have each other to help us in these tough times. And it's so funny you say that because a support, even me being a single mom, having a support system is so, so, so important because, you know, just life duties being a mother, you take on a lot of roles and it's okay to not be perfect at everything. It's okay to not be strong all the time. And even that's a challenge that I face is I have to tell myself, you know what, you're doing the best. You're not going to succeed. This is... You, Everything is a challenge. Every experience might be new. You could be a mother for 20 years and be faced with a new experience right. at that time. So it's okay to take a breather and not be strong all the time. So a support system is so very important, whether it's, you know, my mom is a really great support system. I can go to her for a lot of advice when I'm faced with new challenges. Um, so definitely it is okay to just take a breather and, and not be, you know, not know everything. Mm -hmm. And I think you said one word you used was being perfect. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of moms have that expectancy of trying to be perfect and have everything in order. Right. Mm -hmm. It's okay to make mistakes right. sometimes because we all do. So take one day at a time, breathe, have that moment to yourself. I know it's difficult um, and hard sometimes. I know when, when I was raising mine, sometimes I'll just go in the laundry closet and close the door for a minute. <laughs> yes. If it's five minutes, you need that moment right. to yourself to get yourself together because a lot of times we do deal with internal issues. And, and um, you know, we have to realize, and that you all have already stated, that a support group is really great. Having your family and friends that can support you while you, you know, during your time of, Pisces, but I yes. say that sometimes, <laughs> um, yes. they're important to have, so. Karen, you yes. do a lot with your daughter um, yes. in volleyball, cheerleading, yes. all those things. Talk about the sacrifice you make to be at her events and yes. at her track meets and, and those things of that nature. That schedule is never ending. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, I'm blessed to have a job where I can have the schedule to be at her different events and so on and so forth. It is a sacrifice and 
like with my boys, um, my older boys, I was a single parent at that time and I couldn't be there. So I promised with you know, my younger two that I wouldn't miss anything. I would always be there. I felt so bad when I couldn't be there. And it's very important. Um, Because I know growing up, my parents, they always work. I have both of my parents, but they always work and they couldn't be there. So I know what that felt like. So I promised, you know, that I would always be there for them and try to be at everything that I could possibly be at. That's amazing. Now, I I know there's so many mothers that have children and they go through postpartum and they don't even know how to overcome that. What would you say to a mom who is just swimming or drowning Mm -hmm. in postpartum how what what advice would you give that would help her overcome I guess I would say that you're not alone Mm -hmm. I mean there's many support groups out there Um, just reach out to the different organizations that specialize in postpartum and just know that you know you're not alone and there is help for you right yeah the worst thing you can do is just to isolate yourself and yes. think that, you know, I'm not a good mother because I'm dealing with this. No, there's a high percentage of new moms who, who deals with it now and who have dealt with it. I had a minor case of it, thank God, but I understand it. Just you have that loneliness feeling. Yes. And that's a, a deceit, like a plan of the enemy to tell you that you're mm-hmm. alone when you have a beautiful gift in front of you, but yet you feel alone. It's very important to reach out yes. to somebody, a sister, a mother, a friend. You have to reach out. Mm-hmm. That, that's, that's so good. Shante, you are an entrepreneur and have children. How is it in the world that we live in, um, everybody is trying to get the bag Mm -hmm. and raise their children. How do you balance that? And are your children part of the reason why you go so hard? And what would you say to an entrepreneur that's a single mom with children trying to run a business? You run a hair salon, short plug, you do hair, wigs, all that. (laughs) So so what would you say to a mother to encourage her that just feels like, man, the business, the children? And it's so funny you say that because um, it was a point in time where I didn't have balance. Um, Like Mm -hmm. you said, when you was a single mother with your two two yes. older sons it was a point in time where i'm juggling being a provider being the head of household still being a mother still having my own personal life and trying to keep my 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 sanity really for for lack of better words mm. um and you just you know like i said before you just have to take a breather and that's the time where you gotta lean more into god like you really have to ask for his strength and his peace and his guidance because i now when my kids are out of school i'm out of school which was crazy because two years ago i would drop them off to my grandma when when she was in better health and go right back to work till you know late at night Mm -hmm. and nothing has changed in my finances and i was uh, so afraid to have more balance with my children and to be able to you know be available to them when they get out of school thinking i wasn't going to be able to be the provider that i was and god said "Mm mm-mm I'm going to make a way either way. So I think that when you feel like you're lost in that balance, you definitely have to ask God for his guidance and make sure that you're not doing what you, you're not walking by sight. You're walking by faith because <laughs> now that I made so many changes as far as me actually being behind the chair, I actually increased my finances and I'm not behind the chair 16 hours a day and 12 hours a day anymore. I'm there six eight hours when my kids are at school and then I'm at home being a mom so definitely you have to you have to you have to ask him for his strength ask him for his peace and definitely always ask him to order your footsteps and ask for his guidance so Dr. Felicia being an earned doctorate not online (laughs) uh, (laughs) you have uh, got education Mm -hmm. behind you and are an adjunct professor as well as supporting your husband, who is our Kissimmee campus pastor and runs a successful um, entrepreneur venture. I, I would like to ask you, or how, what is the role that you think education plays in just, you come from a lineage of family that believed in education. Can you share some tips or stories that your mom ingrained in you that helped you get across the finish line? Because there's a lot of ladies who start things and don't finish. And to actually earn your doctorate had to have a lot of discipline to be able to do that. All right, you definitely have to have a lot of discipline. When I decided to go back to school just for my doctorate, um, I was working full time at the time, helping, like you say, helping my husband with his business. So 
it was like I'm working full time during the day and then I come home I'm doing homework writing papers doing essays and then we had three younger boys at the house and they want to know what's for dinner mm -hmm. <laughs> you know they want to play games with you and do different stuff so it was like it was very hard but you had to um set this up set a schedule for yourself you know time management was very very important during that time so if you find yourself in a place where he's like am i going to be able to do this go back to school if you have kids or you're working full time, just you know, seek God for guidance, but also know you have to have time management for yourself as well. So I wanna ask Karen and Lady April, you all have children that are older than us. Um, I'd like to ask you, what are some things that you look back and say, if I could have did it again, I probably would have added this to, probably would have spanked David a little more. <laughs> 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 what 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 would it be that you would say that you would add or I was um, blessed to be um, an at home mom when they were small and Amen. went to work um, you know when they were able to go to school um, but looking back um, sometimes I feel like their teenage years were the years that maybe I should have been home um, because it was so many things that took place or take place when you're not there. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think having supervision, and I know we're living in a time where you have to work mm -hmm. and all of that, I understand that. But if I had a chance to change something, I would have maybe um, as much as possible went into a different direction that would allow me to be home longer um, until they were, you know, better up in age. Um, mm -hmm. Also, if I can add one more thing, looking back, I think that I would have um, spent a little bit more time with them individually mm -hmm. and good. not just mm -hmm. as a group because we did a lot of fun things together, yes. a lot of sports and vacations mm -hmm. and all of that. We did a lot of Bible study and conversation together, but the individual time, especially mm -hmm. when they're teenagers, those are key moments. Mm -hmm. So one-on-one mm -hmm. -on -one times are very important with your kids and I did not do enough of that. Mm -hmm. And so if I had that chance, those are things that I would definitely change. Okay. Karen. And I totally agree with her. Um, being a single parent when my boys were younger. I was a sole provider, so I was always gone, always working. I had my own business, so I in the cosmetology industry. <laughs> so it takes a lot of long, long days, very demanding. So a lot of times I wasn't there. I had a great support system. My parents, they took care of my boys most of the time because I did long days. So if I could, I would definitely, um, wish I had more time with them. And like she said, I would not would have never thought about that, but spending time with them individually, they're totally different, yes. totally different. And just learning more about them as a whole, but definitely spending more time with them. So one of the Im important aspects is, is depositing scripture into your children mm -hmm. as a parent. If you grew up in a context of spirituality, your, your mother, or father, mostly moms, would impart into you the word of God. How yes. how important is that to your children to share with them, even if they may not get it at school or they may get it at school, to share with them the word of God over their lives? And yeah, I think that's the foundation, mm -hmm. to sit in that word in them from when they're not even talking yet, having scripture around the house where they can see it, mm -hmm. and they'll remember it, they'll remember what they see. Um, I make an effort in every child's bedroom above their bed to have scripture mm -hmm. tailored where I believe that God is speaking for their lives, that they know that they're fearfully and wonderfully made, mm -hmm. that they know that um, it's more than just the outward appearance, mm -hmm. it's the beauty of the inside their heart. So I believe without that foundation, it's very difficult, especially mm -hmm. in today's world, to allow your child to understand who they are in Christ because they're finding their identity everywhere else through 
every facet of social media yes. and you know just you know we, we really have to pour into them daily we can't just allow that scripture on the wall but also speak to them mm -hmm. and pray with them and have them pray with you mm -hmm. So I, I want to kind of pivot a little bit. Um, this week has been a week filled with um, intense emotion, as you uh, would see on social media, Ahmaud Barry, Arbery uh, being drastically taken out and uh, as a young black male jogging. Um, I'd like to ask all of you, but I'd like to actually start with uh, Lady April. You, you have grown boys. Does that ever cross your mind at all, or is it just kind of not really? Because, or is it something that is a reality that that you think about? That there is a fear that my my son could be, or you know, out there in the world, and something negative happen. Yes, when they were young adults, uh, that was a fear of mine. Uh, again, because a lot of times I wasn't home, I was mm -hmm. working, um, and. So they had the advantage of, you know, doing whatever. But even now, you know, it's always on your mind because it's the world we live in. Mm -hmm. um, and so as for me, um, you know, raising them, all you can do is train them, you know, mm -hmm. train them up. You know, when they were younger, I was careful with who they played with. I was careful with who they, mm -hmm. you know, hung around or stayed with. I wouldn't let them go stay at anybody's house. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's the training. And then when they get older, you hope that they will remember and be wise enough to make those choices in difficult times and situations. So even now, you know, because they're adults mm -hmm. and they can say whatever, <laughs> you know, I'm praying that they are still wise. Mm -hmm when situations mm -hmm. are in front of them and they will say the right thing at the right time yes. and be around the right people, you know, and be at the right place because a lot of these incidences happen, you know, when people are in wrong places at the, at the wrong time. Yes. Karen? When my boys were growing up, I didn't think, um, I felt like I didn't worry so much about them when they were growing up. They're what, 23 and 30 now? Um, I felt like the times were much different in which it was. But now, um, it's, I constantly keep them covered. Not that I didn't before, but uh, constantly praying for them, especially my 30 year old. He's a little different. <laughs> um, but I love them all dearly. But, um, it terrifies me, honestly, just watching what's going on now. Um, I felt like it was different then, but now I have Donovan who's 12, mm. and it's like, and it seems like things are getting worse. He's a basketball player, <laughs> plays on the basketball courts, yes. and you just wonder, uh, Shantae and then Karen and Dr. Weijer. Um, I think just as a mother raising a young black man, you know, that it's gonna be terrifying. It's always gonna be something on the back of your mind, especially now in these times where it's just getting worse, the things that we're hearing on the news. You know, it doesn't matter the image anymore. You know, it's not like back in the days where it was certain images that were targeted and certain things. Now it's just- It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, exactly. So um, I do my best um, not only to pray over my children, but to also instill, like Lady April was saying, um, down to, how I dress my son and we fight all the time about his haircuts he wants certain mm -hmm. haircuts and certain things that mm -hmm. I try to instill in him now mm -hmm. you know just to prepare him for the future and it's sad but mm -hmm. it's the reality we live in you know these certain little changes may or may not make or break you in the world that we live in Stereotypes. and um, my son is going to be 11 and I don't think he's too young to start understanding the reality that he may face as he get older. Mm. All right. I think that's really good what you said. Mm. Um, just preparing them and hoping and praying that they don't stay naive, mm -hmm. thinking that the world is a, a beautiful place. I mean, it could be, but we know it's real out there. Mm -hmm. um, just my son being so young 
and thinking that everybody's nice. It's not the case. So just preparing them, covering them, even my girls, mm -hmm. letting them know how to present yourself, mm -hmm. you know, how to be confident when you speak and so that you're not stereotyped, even though it can happen. And we almost have to give them survival skills. Like, what do you do if the situation happens? Mm -hmm. We also have to use wisdom when we do that, because at, at their age, depending on their age, they may not understand it. But we have to use wisdom, God's word, and teaching them, okay, this is what you do, this is what you say. And like Lady April said, that prayerfully they'll remember it and make wise choices. Mm -hmm. I agree also, it's very important that, you know, as they're, they're younger, that you teach them certain things. And so when they are older, they remember it. So even when they are far away from you, they're not living with you anymore, mm -hmm. they still remember the things that you taught them when they were younger. Mm -hmm. And I think that's very important. And um, also just when they have their own kids <laughs> one day, they can also be able to teach them as well. So I think that's um, very important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, there's so many conversations we can have about mothers and we can go all day about the value and the importance of mothers and the realities, the fears. Hopefully you got a glimpse of the fact that you're not alone. And if you are watching right now and you have lost your mother, many of us during this time, this is not a happy time. It's hard for us to imagine a Mother's Day. I want to encourage you to let you know that God ultimately cares about you. And even in this day, is not insensitive to not know that this is a day that brings you great pain. So don't run from your emotions or the, the, the sadness of soul. But I pray that you'll find strength and peace in God's unchanging hand. I, I just want uh, Lady April to pray for those that are that are mothers right now that are hurting that are in between that are just trying to find themselves they're young and they're trying to figure who they are and raise children and that God would just anoint you through the prayers of faith that go far beyond a screen that can reach you right where you are and so father we thank you for your love and your kindness and your tender, tender mercies. We thank you, O oh God, that you are a caring God and you are all-knowing. And regardless of what we go through or have gone through, nothing takes you by surprise. We thank you, O oh God, for the many mothers who are watching um, today. We ask God that you would just be with them. And God, I pray that you would let them know that they are not alone that there are people who care and people who love them, and people who are praying for them. Father, I pray that you would give them strength in their weakness, that you will comfort their heart, God, when they uh, are discouraged, when they are confused, when they feel like giving up. God, I pray that they will realize that there is hope in you. Yes. God, I pray for peace which passes all understanding. I pray, oh God, that you would just give them the joy that they need to sustain them, Father. God, I pray that you would meet every need in each and every one's heart. Yes. And that you would build them up, God, when they feel like that they are weak and torn down. God, we just ask that you cover all of our mothers. We know that being a mother is difficult at times. It's a struggle. It's challenging. Father, with one child or with six or ten. But God, you've placed these children in our life to be nurturers, to be caregivers. God, to be examples of who you are. Yes. So Father, help us to walk in that calling. And when it's difficult, God, help us to reach out to those who might be able to help us, Father. Help us, oh God, to know that we're not alone. Continue to strengthen each and every heart Continue, O oh God, to allow your anointing to rest upon each and every life. Yes. Breathe on us now, Father, that we will continue, God, to go forth in the strength, the wisdom, and the knowledge that you've given us of how to be a mother. In yes. Jesus' name, Jesus. Amen. 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 I hope you're certainly blessed by this. The replay will be happening this evening. Make sure you share it. Don't forget, Kasimi comes on 
at 12 p.m. as well as Creole tonight. So take care. We look forward to seeing you this Wednesday night real soon, real soon. Take care. All right, family, here we go once again with Walker Arts Group. We're getting ready to go and do another one of our Pay It Forward blessings where we come and we surprise someone with the check and we'll be a blessing in their life. Come go with me. Hi, I know you were expecting Laquita, yeah. but I'm, I'm Pastor Deron Dixon from the Kingdom Church where David Jock is our lead pastor. And we have what is called our Pay It For It Blessing. We have a Pay It For It Blessing where we bless individuals with a thousand dollar. And I come today to present you with a thousand dollar check from the Kingdom Church. I want you to open it and just look right there and you can see it. Just open it and see it for yourself and you put it back in there. That's, that's for you. We heard your story. We thank you for being a blessing in this difficult time. And we want to let you know, all we want you to do is just continue to pay it for it. And we'll give you a social distancing Absolutely. hug. Thank you so much. God bless you, so, you much. so much. All right. Laquita did that. All right, family, just like that, we were able to be a blessing in another person's life. And so here it is. We want you to know that if you have someone you want to nominate, please go to our website, www.tkci.org. Pull down the Pay It Forward tab and nominate somebody. We want to be a blessing in their lives. God bless you today. TKC, on, Listen, that's what I'm talking about. We definitely have to go, like the page, follow us, connect with us because we want to connect with you. And Stassi got something special for you too about Pay It Forward. Right, What all I need you to do is go to the TKC Facebook page mm -hmm. or the TKCI.org page yes. and look for the Pay It Forward icon. Click on that. All we need you to do, if you know a family that is in need yes. or just be go, maybe going through a little hard time and you feel like you, they need help, yes. go ahead and write a love letter explaining yes. why they may need to help. Not they don't even have to be a part of the yeah. TKC family. It's all about the community. Yes. The community, and we want to be a blessing and to those out in the community. So you have the opportunity to nominate them yes. right where they are in their situation. Because we love everyone here at yes. TKC. Everybody. It doesn't matter who it is. If you see that there is a need yep. and it's laid on your heart to write a love letter, then you better write that yes. letter because here at TKC, yeah. we follow God. We love people. And we change, change the, the city. city.